Okay. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome no. to Red Salary View. Don't talk over me. <laughs> Today we are joined by our very rude guest. He keeps talking over me. Welcome, Mr. Ken Pike. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Um, you are from the... I'm, I'm probably going to pronounce his name wrong. Is it Absalon or Absol? How is yeah, how's the man pronounced? I was right. All right, good. I had a feeling. Absalon. Right. Like the movie. I never seen. I didn't even know it was a movie. I just now was looking up the band for something, and I saw movies come up. So I'm gonna have to check that out. Was it purposely named after that movie? No, and it was a, it's a terrible, terrible movie. Uh, yeah, I might like it still. I like some terrible movies. Yeah. Well, if you're into the guy that I can't remember his name now that that played the Highlander, the original Highlander. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's he's the lead in it, right. and it's a it's a pretty pretty bad sci-fi movie but but no i didn't name the band after that movie all right so where'd that name come from actually um as best i can remember <laughs> I mean, we were talking a while back um it uh i was uh, reading a stephen king book okay and in the book it referenced absalon but with an a absa Lan, like oh, L A N, right? That's, that's kind of a cool name. I didn't even realize, you know, think about the, the was a movie called Absalon, but so I just said, hey, that's a cool name for a band, and I'll just change the A to an O, and make it Absalon, you know, and then I kind of jinxed myself because of the stupid movie. But <laughs> yeah, because that comes up first, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Like what? Am? <laughs> what are so, you doing? That's all right. My band Severed Angel, uh, and and we looked up Severed Angel before we did anything, and apparently there's a book called Severed Angel. Really? Yeah. And uh, there's a guy on the front cover. He's got no shirt on or nothing, and he's got like one of these poses going on. He's he's a ripped guy, so it's kind of weird. Is it like, <laughs> is it like a Harlequin romance novel or probably? Something? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's Fabio on the front. That's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> funny. Actually, what the funniest thing is, the guy on the front cover of that book looks kind of looks like our bassist uh, old singer from his old band, uh, Timeless Haunt. Oh, because <laughs> he's got like the same kind of hair and everything, and he's like yeah. a bodybuilder too, kind of. So, it kind of like looks like the same guy. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> like, especially back in the eighties with the, the you know the hair bands and stuff like that. A lot of their guys in those bands look like they could have been on the cover of Harlequin Romance novels. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have that kind of look, so <laughs> I look like a bot. So you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's too funny. Um, so you, uh, you've actually been in bands before. I mean, uh, I was going through your your bio, and uh, you've been around for a long time. Actually, you know, you've been from like the eighties. Uh, what's the the other band? Uh, I'm gonna probably pronounce that name, band's name wrong. Malachia. 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 All right, because there's actually a Greek word called uh, Malaka. So I didn't know if it was kind of similar to that. Do you know what no. Malacca means? Malachi. Do you know um, what Malacca means? No. Asshole. Really? Yeah. Well, In Greek. <laughs> well, you know, looking back now and, and my relationship with certain individuals in Malachi when I eventually departed, um, Malachia, Malachia, yeah, that would actually fit. Malachia would work, all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess that, it didn't end well, huh? <laughs> no, it, it didn't. It did not end on a high note. Um, yeah. It was a, it was a really pop in in, in uh, L.A. during uh, the you know the the Hollywood North Hollywood scene and everything. It, it was a we a really popular band. We had a huge audience, yeah. sold a lot of records. Um, but I I gave four years of my life to that band. I yeah. mean, you know, three uh, rehearsal, three nights a week, constantly playing. I mean, we just we gigged nonstop. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, for it to kind of end the way it ended, it. Uh, I look back now it kind of sucks I, I look back now and I 
I was young and stupid at the time. And instead of quitting, because we were, we, we had written all our the song, actually I wrote all the songs for our third uh, album. And we had some, you know, for the eighties, we had some great, great songs. I, everybody felt like that was going to be the album to uh, how to, I, you know, propel us to that the next level to 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 put us on the map. And um, and then I look back now and I wished I had just, uh, you know, bit my tongue and just put aside had put aside all the garbage and just did that third album right um you know because this just was the loss of some great songs and what might have come out of it but then again too that was what it was right around the, the same time that metal was uh going to be hit by a meteor when grunge started yeah. so you know who who knows it, yeah. it might have it might have done nothing because right. metal kind of bonked. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. Yes, it did. <laughs> you know, so, but, but it was a good, it, it was a good band, real good, um, excellent musicians. Um, all, the, all the players were top notch musicians. And um, like I said, we built up a really huge following, uh, especially on the, uh, the club circuit, you know, Gazaris and Whiskey Go Go and, um you know just uh all the all the big clubs you know i mean we we were sometimes packing in 1200 2000 people oh wow you know to see us and got to open for um a lot of bands that actually went on to become at the time huge like warrant and um poison and la guns and um even 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 guns and roses um before uh they hit big with their first album appetite uh, for destruction and it's, it's funny our album was stacked in the same warehouse as their album and then you know they then they hit it big in that but uh mm. yeah so it was a it was a productive four years yeah. you know well, and nice. i i came for myself as a singer which was I guess the, the the best thing that came out of it, you yeah. know, people still remember me from Malachi. Oh, you're the singer. You're a singer for that band Malachi. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's pretty yeah. cool. cool. And, yeah, and so. the way you joined it, band was kind of funny because I, I think this was the one, the band that you joined where you, you actually put a wig on because you didn't have any hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I believe, believe it or not. I was a cop in Los Angeles at the time. Okay. So of course, <clears throat> and the band I was in right before Malachi um, was called Vital Signs, and it 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 was my my first real professional band, and they they had a massive following when I joined them, and um, they ended up I don't even remember why the band broke up, but the, the band broke up. So I started going out and auditioning, and a, a number of the bands I auditioned for. Although I don't, I can't remember if any of them ever went on to, to do anything after that. But uh, there were some really good bands. I mean, I there was one band in particular. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. It's been so long. But uh, and I really wanted to be in that band. And it came down to me and one other guy. They had us both back to audition, and I I thought I nailed it. I just you know. Um, and my voice is what they wanted. They didn't want the, the screamy thing, um, you know, like the rock and roll type screamy thing. And they they wanted more of a Jeff Tate, Queens Rite operetta. Well, that's what how I sang. So uh, I thought, you know, the the other guy, I didn't think was that really that good. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't really that good. So I thought, oh, cool. They really liked my voice. But it came down to my hair because, of course, everyone in the band had hair down on their butts. Right. And here I am with this short hair. Right. And so they they broke the news to me. I was out in the hallway area or sitting area of the rehearsal, their rehearsal studio. They had a really nice rehearsal studio. 
And um, the guy walks out, I think it was the guitarist, and he walked out there and he said, man, you know, we we really dig your your voice. You got a great voice and blah, blah, blah. And, and the thing is, is I was dressed, you know, heavy metal, yeah. my, my clothes stuff. And, that, and he said, but man, we, we, we can't get past your hair. You're too short, man. And it doesn't fit the image. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You know, yeah. and I, at that time, Jeff Tate, um, you know, he had short, kind of yeah. shortish what, hair. What year was I it wrote, again? What, uh, year was, what year was that? Uh, 19, see, I joined Malachi in 1980. This has probably been 1983. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Everybody had long hair then. I was trying to think when did Halford cut his hair? But he, that was like 90s. But yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the early 80s. Everybody had, like I said, hair actually, the only thing, hair. only person I could think of that would have short hair would be like Paul Diano. Yeah, he had he had short hair, and and then the singer for Alcatraz, um, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Bonnet. Okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He he had short hair and always wore the aviator glasses. Yeah. But that really was about it. And like I said at the time, Jeff Tate still um, kind of had short hair. He was starting to grow it out, but. But no, it, it it didn't work. Nothing. It was like okay. <laughs> so I was bummed, and and I almost was going to just stop trying to get into another band because there was something I could do about my hair. I couldn't mm -hmm. grow my hair long, you know. <laughs> if I wanted to, you know, keep my job, right. uh, it was bad enough that I wore an earring, and that was back when you know, in business anyway, especially on a police department, you didn't wear an earring. Right. But I took enough grief for that. Um, so anyway, I saw an ad for Malachi, the bass player had put out. And um, I'll tell you, Malachi was, they now call white metal, but it was a Christian heavy metal band. Mm -hmm. And of course, Striper had hit, was big, had started getting really big at the time. So there was all these uh, Christian band, metal bands started popping up, trying to follow, you know, through the door, Striper door. Um, so, but I, I was like, you know, I, I don't really care if it's heavy metal and, and they're good. I don't care, you know, yeah. what they are. Um, I, I want to play, I want to get in a band, I want to sing. So, um, I knew that they had an image. They all had long hair. So I went to a wig shop and I spent $500 or more on this wig. Wow. That sucker looked real. I was going to say, and it had to look real. Oh, it looked, it, it, it was a good look. I look like, man, I got some cool hair. <laughs> so I, I put the wig on um, and went to the, the audition. And uh, the, the bass player had sent me a couple of songs that they had already written um, to learn. So I, I learned the songs and I went and, you know, belted them out. Um, put my my spin on them and into the audition um they they were all like yeah man you you're you're great would you you know would you be interested in joining and they they mentioned my hair and go man you got cool hair and <laughs> I, i'm thinking yeah they only knew this was <laughs> so you know i joined the band and I wore that, you know, every rehearsal before I left the house, I put that wig on and, um, you know, get it all nice and really cool looking. It was, it was, I mean, it was an expensive wig, so it stuck really well. Right. And uh, I go to rehearsal and then we started, uh, we, you know, we rehearsed, we got our set down and I wrote um, a bunch of songs uh, uh, at the, then for, for the band, rehearsed them all, started gigging. And um, the first show went over really well. We didn't have a big audience, you know, nobody knew the, who the hell we were, mm -hmm. but uh, it was still, it was a good show. Then we did uh, our second show. It, it seems like I remember it was at a club or some, a, a small club in LA. And um, while during one of the songs about midway through the show, you know, I'm getting a little, you know, I'm headbanging. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. And I felt I felt the wig start slipping up. Oh man. You know, and I 
shit. So during the solo, I'm, you know, I'm kind of got my back to the audience, back by the drums uh, riser. And yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm acting like I'm playing with my hair, but I'm getting it back in place. Right. So the rest of the show, luckily there's only a few songs left, but the rest of the show, you know, I was like, you know, yeah, not more, uh, yeah. being really careful. <clears throat> so after that gig, you know, I, I, I got home and, and I thought real long and hard about it, but this is ridiculous. It's only a matter of time. This thing's you know, going to, is going to fall off. It's going to go flying off in the audience and, and that right. going to be it. Yeah. Um, although, uh, um, Oh, uh, what's his name? Sing was singing for Deep Purple, and then um, he's got his he's got his own album, uh, a new album out now. It's a great album, and but he wore a wig his entire just about his entire life, and he's right. just now taking. Yeah, well, what was uh, that? I, I just I can't think of who. What is who's? I, I keep wanting to say Joe Lynn Turner, but that's not. No, Joel it's not him. Um, um, I always confuse him. <laughs> it's uh, oh God, Santa, it's going to come to it. Yeah, it will. It will. Or sooner or later, if you if you remember, shout uh, it out. I'm gonna um, it <laughs> it's gonna bother. Yeah, gonna have to, <laughs> it's gonna drive both nuts. We're bald, so um, you know. But uh, so I decided that look, I I've got I got to tell, I got to come clean. Right. So next rehearsal, I wore the wig, and I get there, and we always discuss business and stuff, but before we start rehearsing, you know, what, what our, our next shows were, you know, they, they, Hey, got any new songs and that kind of thing. Mm. So we, during the, I said, Hey guys, um, I, I got something to, that I need to tell you. I got to get it off my chest. So they all thought I was getting ready to quit. And I was going right. to tell them I can't do this. <laughs> and I didn't even tell them. I just said, and I pulled off the wig and, and they were all like, <laughs> and the guitar player really cool guy named james who really cool dude but he was like dude what the <laughs> <laughs> you know i i and i explained the whole auditioning thing and the, with the hair and everything and i said look i really wanted to be in the band and i'm so i'm i apologize for like basically lying and fooling you guys and that and you know, if you want me, you know, if you think that this isn't going to work, and you know, I, I totally understand. Mm -hmm. But they were all like, "No, it's kind of cool." I, you know, they thought the difference, me being the, the front man with the short hair, although I, I I'd grown it a little bit as as much as I could for work, right, and, and not get in trouble. Um, and they all had long hair and everything, but I, you know, I still dress in all the typical 80s metal gear at the time mm -hmm. and they were like no that's cool mm -hmm. so they kept me wow yeah so, so now, that's the uh, i wonder if you would have never got that wig though i wonder if they would have still hired you you know i i don't know i think it i gotta say i doubt it it because it was right at the be i hadn't maybe if i hadn't uh, rehearsed with them i hadn't yeah. brought a song you know, I, I wrote the bulk of the songs for the band um, and I hadn't already performed and they could see that I had, you know, I, I, I live for the stage. So I'm, I'm, I'm a performer mm -hmm. and they saw me on stage. Maybe at the very beginning at the audition, they would have probably maybe gone, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we, we got long hair, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think I was able to overcome the, the hair issue because of the, uh, the other stuff so yeah. and it, it ended up working out fine you know i there was never any uh any issues or anything with like an audience or, or what like i said we went on to build a big audience so nobody mm. really cared yeah. you know we put on a hell of a show so you know but yeah that's one of those little little things from the past that you know you you look back on, you got to kind of laugh and you think, did I really do that? <laughs> <laughs> it's hair, like <laughs> hair today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> hair to the Bobby. <laughs> uh, what color was, was your wig? What color was the hair? It was kind of a dark brown. Okay. My, at the time, my hair naturally was almost black. Okay. It was a little dark hair. 
of course now I don't have any hair, but, um, and if I did, it'd be all like my beard be all gray, but, um, yeah, so it was kind of a dark Brown beard. It was down to almost the elbows. Oh, okay, wow. It, it really was, it was a really good looking wig. Was it curly straight? It was kind of wavy. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't curly, Did you but keep it wasn't. it? You know, I kept it for a long time, mm. um, but I don't know whatever happened to it. I, I I wish I had it. Yeah. It would just be something to kind of put out. Yeah, just put it out on know? one of those mannequin heads. <laughs> put it in the yeah. corner. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, a remembrance of that really weird time in my life. But, you know, when you want to be in a band, when you want to play back you do in the anything. Day, you did do about anything, yeah. you know? And, you know, so I went out and spent over $500 for that a stinking wig just to be in a band. <laughs> so that's funny. That's, that's cool. Yeah. You know, that I ended up leaving four years later, but anyway, Hey, you know what shit happens? You know, I, I, I was in another band too for 13 years and, you know, I gave my life to that band and always, you know, the band was in Queens. It's about like an hour from me. So I was the only mm -hmm. one, on long island so i was the one traveling to the practices all the time so i i, I made i you know i wanted to do that band you know i wanted to be in a band and 13 years later we did you know recorded an album uh did two a couple demos or whatever but at the end like one of the last shows we did uh we opened up for epic it was like the a sold out show it was the biggest show i ever played i said i'm done because it just the show before we had there was just too many things going on and I wasn't mm -hmm. liking how the band, because we were a family and I didn't like how the band was starting to become. It just didn't seem like a family anymore. So I just got sick of it. But 13 years, I, I you know, <laughs> I dealt with nonsense. But you, Four well, years you know, is nothing. You you made, but you made a good point about, you know, what family. When, when I first joined Malachi, I would say at least for the first three years, I mean, we were like, um, now we did go through a couple of guitarists and like spinal tap. We seemed like we, we went through a few drummers till we finally found the guy. And, and this guy was, I, I still say he was probably one of the best drummers I've ever played with. Um, just ever. He, he, he had played for, uh, something crimson or something it one he toured with them anyways this is an excellent drummer but we were tight those first three years i could say yeah, we were we were we were brothers mm -hmm. you know and yeah i was driving a good two hours wow. to rehearsal and then two hours home That's crazy, and yeah. we were rehearsing i say three times a week and i mean it was serious it wasn't it wasn't a joke it wasn't some you know yeah, let some guys put a band together and go play, you know, and yeah. you know, park a park lot. It, it was serious, and we we had we had some serious investment in the band. Uh, they bought all our equipment and our clothes, and we had a big. Uh, eventually, had a big stage set up, mm. which actually was too big, and most of the clubs we couldn't even get it in, or they wouldn't let us use it. But um, you know, so it, it was it was a serious deal. Um, but we were really tight. But that last year, like with most bands, differences started leaking in. Um, the bass player and uh, the guitar, the, the bass player who created the band, he, he came up with a name. So it was his baby. Mm. But over the three years, he began to feel like it was the Kim Pike show. And it's right. like, well, I'm the singer, I'm the front man. And I can't help that that's what you usually focus on as a singer. And then there'll be the guitar player. <clears throat> but he started getting really kind of upset about that. Then the guitar player, um, he was a really good guitarist, but he started getting kind of upset because I was writing all the songs. And he wanted to, us to do some of his songs. But the only problem was, is his songs didn't sound like Malachi. His songs were almost... Um, I don't want to say prog because some of, most of our stuff was kind of progish, but um, it it was real instrumental oriented, mm. you know, as opposed to uh, uh, vocally oriented or song oriented. It was more instrument, and they were his tunes were a little brighter. I write very dark music, and I still do. I can um, tell that. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm total minor chords and, you know, and that's how I write. And, um, so he started getting upset because, you know, and we did bring in a couple of his songs, even though they really didn't fit. It was like, I don't have a problem. I don't have to write every song. You know, sometimes I don't want to write. And, uh, so we, we introduced them into the set and a couple of his songs was going to be on the next, the third album. Um, <clears throat> So that all started, you know, creeping in. And then I come to start finding that um, the record label uh, was basically screwing us. Oh, another <laughs> one, huh? Old story. <laughs> old story. Yeah. And we, we, yeah. And this why until recently I had not gotten onto another, you know, want to deal with record label. Yeah. Because, uh, so you didn't learn they, your lesson. <laughs> I, well, yeah. And I was, I, you know, back then I could say I was young and stupid. I don't know yeah. about now. <laughs> I, why, yeah. uh, you think I would have learned, but, uh, yeah, we were, we, I found, we, you know, that I was getting screwed in particular when it comes to royalties and stuff. I was writing the songs. <clears throat> and of course, as you know, by law, the only person that's got to be paid is the person that writes the songs. Mm -hmm. You can arrange a song and be paid for the arrangement, but a singer or a songwriter got to be paid for your song. Yeah. So I find out that when I went to do the copyrights or when we went to do the copywriting of the songs, the bass player was adding his name as a co-songwriter. More just like, dude, you didn't write this. I wrote this song, but I didn't discover all this until years later. Oh my god! So that that compounded it and started making it more even more difficult. And um, we uh, the how do how do I put this delicately? I guess I can not put it delicately. Oh, um, Love it out. The I this is I like just, a therapy session. I think. Yeah, you very well could be, you know. If I get, <laughs> you, let, you can lay down if you want. Pay you? <laughs> yes. My PayPal is <laughs> yeah. open your life at AOL.com. Just whatever you want to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. Um, uh, so, Dr. Noon. Um, yeah, you need help. I, you, need, you need a lot of help. You got to let this I go. I need psychotherapy. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's one thing. Quite. Uh, let's say I still got some black in yeah, it. But yeah. anyway. I got I I got really sick of the whole Christian thing. Mm. Um, I I'm I'm not a Christian. I I don't believe in any. I'm I I don't believe in any religion. I so um, I I was getting really tired of that because it was expected every song that I wrote it had to have some reference, you know, a religious a Christian reference of some sort, you know. Um, or Jesus or, you know, something. And so I, I was getting really tired of that. I, I wanted just to write songs that meant something. Yeah. And I wrote a song called Runaway, which ended up on a, um, a compilation album called uh, California Metal 2. And we recorded, uh, you, you, you probably know John Elefante, he was saying for Kansas. Uh, yeah, yep. Well, uh, we went to Pachyderm Studios, which is owned by him and his brother Dino, and we recorded the song there. And it was pretty cool having John Elefante coaching me. You know, yeah, it took me to yeah. get Pat. Oh, that's John Elefante. <laughs> 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 yeah, guy's got an awesome voice, and he's coaching me. I'm, oh, dude, try this, try that. <laughs> and uh, then he did some keyboard stuff and things in the song. It was a great. It ended up just coming out and be a great song. You, you can Google it. Uh, it's called Runaway um, by Malachi. Or no, actually, I think we were Vision or some. We changed our name. Anyway. Okay. Uh, but it, it was, it, it had nothing to do with religion, had nothing to do with Christianity. It was, it was a, a song about, a, you know, a person having problems in their life and wanting just to run away from everything and, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, you know, I had to fight tooth and nail to to get the band to do the song, mm. and I think it ended up being one of the best songs that we had at the time. 
And um, but because it, it didn't reference, you know, so I was getting I was getting really tired of that aspect. I was getting really tired of, you know, Christian folk coming up to us after a show and wanting to get into conversations about our faith, and particularly me um, being the singer and everything, you know, about my faith. And, and um, I had some that would come up and chastise me because I painted my fingernails black. I I was goth before goth was popular um, on stage. I was where I was very gothic um, a few years into Malachi. Um, so I and I wore a big black cross and stuff like that. So I get these people coming up and chastising me about, well, you know, that's what's up. You know, the black fingernails are kind of evil looking. It's kind of I mean, that's like the devil stuff going on there. And I'm like, no. It's stage. I don't dress like this when I'm not on stage. I wear jeans and a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, <clears throat> this is stage. So I got really, I got really tired of the whole, you know, the Christian community and the expectations of being in a in a Christian band. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. that we were we were pigeonholed into like Striper. We were a Christian band. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got, you know, all of it tied, put together. I finally came to a boiling point where, you know, I, I, I'm done. I've had enough. I can go do my own thing, start, start my own thing, um, at this point. And, uh, so I went, uh, one, one rehearsal, I walked in and we started discussing business and stuff. I said, look, Hey guys, I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm done. I can't, I, I can't do this anymore, mm. you know, and they were all pissed at me. And our, the bass player is uh, pro, uh, from interviews I've seen and heard of him. Uh, I don't think he's ever, because the band, that was it. That was the end of Malachi. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. They, they, tr- they, they, they tried, they got a female singer who was more of a rock and roll singer. Didn't, and it didn't sound like Malachi at all. Really? And they, um, were the the songs kind of morphed into more just rock and roll sounding heavy rock if you want to call it that and um it went for about four months and that was it and so i don't think uh the bass players ever forgiven me ever for for quitting um on you know i wouldn't either you ruined his whole career did he ever do another band or do you don't you know I did some solo stuff after that. Believe it or not, I I wrote a bunch of songs that sounded like kind of like Brian Adams, mm. and um, I was trying my hand at that. And um, then I moved to uh, I got it, it, it's a complicated story. Yeah, you're was, all over the place because you think you, you then you get into a country band. <laughs> well, no. It wasn't a country band. I tried my hand at country rock for about two minutes. <laughs> yeah, a couple of country songs, and I'm telling you, it's so easy to write. Yeah. It's not even. Uh, I could write things all day long, and um, but uh, it, yeah, I can't stand country. Um, yeah. But I ended up in uh, on a promotion. I I I was a street cop for um, let's see eighty two to. 1990 and um then i i went to the department of justice and uh, to the the bureau uh, so i became a federal law enforcement officer and in uh, 1995 they transferred me to florida on a promotion and once i got to florida um i like within a few months uh my neighbor in the back of the of where we live he had a blues cover band and they needed a singer, and we got to talking one day, and I he found out I was a singer. So I went over and I sang a few blues songs, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, stuff like that. And uh, they were, hey, you know, would you sing? You want to sing for us? You know, we we make some money. We go out and they play gig there every weekend at the you know bars and stuff. Oh yeah, sure. So I I joined them and I did that for a little over a year until I just got absolutely sick of doing blues covers. <laughs> they also like. And yeah. I get confused. We had like 80 songs that we did. And I start getting them all confused. I didn't know whether <laughs> I was I was doing Stevie Ray Vaughan or was doing uh, whatever over here. You know, they all sound alike to me. 
So, uh, no, our, my friend uh, Lisa, man, she's she comes on the show once in a while. She's actually a, a blues musician. She's like famous uh, for her blues music, but she's also a metalhead too. So just ignore that uh, that blues part, Lisa, please. Oh no, no. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, I love blues. I love Stevie Ray Vaughan, and and I loved. Um, it, I mean, even the old blues, um, older blues. I I I I like to listen to the blues. But for singing the blues, I it kind of got boring. I'm a metalhead, yeah, and it got yeah. boring for me because it was just you know the same. There's only like three tempos. There's only you know, certain chords. Yeah, you know, yeah I feel, I feel so I, she she knows that too. So it's all right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I still love her. <laughs> I, I can I totally respect and appreciate a good blues player. Yeah. Um, so she's actually awesome. I'll have to send you some stuff that she does. She's awesome. Her, her vocals are, are, are really great. And uh, she's a bass player too. So she's a really good bass player. Oh, I'd like to hear it. Yeah. yeah. I'll send you some yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So Lisa, don't, don't get mad at me. Yeah, I do like yeah. blues, you know, just, Oh, and uh, <laughs> it was uh, the guy with no, uh, with the hair. Uh, Joe Lynn Turner was the guy. Was it Joe Lynn Turner? It was Joe Lynn Turner. Yeah. Oh, okay. So mm. we, we were right. I don't know who I'm thinking of. I'm thinking. I think of the other singer that sang for Rainbow. Uh, I mean, Joel and Turner sang. You probably think of Graham, Graham Bonnet, maybe. Uh, it was him. He sang for Rainbow, and then of course Dio. But there was that um, other guy that sang with him for a, a while. Not can't remember his name. It's not important. It doesn't really matter. But, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I um, I stole the bass player of the blues band and the guitarist at the time and um i put together a band called turnpike and um we got the the bass player's drummer uh bass <laughs> the bass <laughs> brother um, big big freaking norwegian dude i mean this guy he looked like a freaking viking and um he played drums and and man you think john he John Bonham, man. I mean, this guy, he was hit them drums so stinking hard. Mm. But anyway, so put together this band, got a keyboard player and stuff, wrote, started writing songs. And it was like alternative, alternative rock. You know, it was real popular in, in, in you know, the mid to, you know, the late 90s. Um, I called it chick rock because mm. the song here to girls. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that band was together for about six years. And um, that band, it seems like about every band I've been in, at some point started getting pretty popular, but but never went, you know, to big, big time. Mm-hmm. But uh, that band got, we put out three uh, CDs. It started getting really popular when we were playing House of Blues and Hard Rock um, oh, wow. all the time, bringing in a lot of people. Um, hard Rock loved us. One of the um, security dudes, it, it would be in the back and when he'd come in to play and he said man you guys are like the hard rock uh house band it's like oh. well, you guys are here all the time <laughs> uh-huh. and um so that went on for about uh six years and um we were doing really well and then and the drummer the drummer was a really heady guy super metaphysical and into just kind of sometimes you you didn't understand what he's even talking about it would just kind of go over your head Uh, but he quit decided to move to um sonora or somewhere in new mexico some like real spiritual place and and, uh it was like well so we we auditioned tons of drummers trying to find a drummer and and nobody worked it just didn't work and then the bass player kind of got tired of it he was tired of the auditioning and actually we've been doing it for six years so everyone just kind of eh, and petered out mm. yeah, that's and nice. at that point i put away music for a while i i i kind of had it you know the, all the years of plugging away so hard and um so i don't know probably about a year year and a half i just i didn't pick up the guitar i didn't sing i didn't do anything i just mm. you know, worked yeah. and, and did that concentrating on my job and so and um then 
one night I had my guitar and amplifier and stuff down in um, like a downstairs den area, but I still had it all there. And uh, one night I just, for some reason, I went downstairs and just like, eh, I'm bored. I'm going to bang around the guitar. Hadn't played it in a long time. I strapped that sucker on and put on the distortion and wrote the first song for the debut Absalon album that night. Oh, wow. It's just like metal. I was like, yeah, this is what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm metal. I'm not all this alternative rock blues country crap. <laughs> I'm, I'm metal. Yeah. And, um, so I started writing again. I got about four songs in and I, I had thought I was just going to do like four songs and, and maybe just put out like a little four song EP and see if anybody even really cares. Right. Um, but those four songs, I, I noticed that they had a connection. It was like a story was going on. So I, I was, you know, a huge, uh, a, Obviously, I'm a huge Queen's Right fan, mm -hmm. um, and I I loved Operation Mindcrime. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my own concept album and, yeah. and do a story. And so that's what I did. I spent I don't know how months and months writing songs, interludes in between pieces, a couple little sound effects, speaking pieces, and stuff, and and um. I put uh, put it all together, and so it was it was a running story. And uh, a guy I uh, was in uh, Turnpike, the guitar player. His name was Ed Dumas, um, or Dumas. Um, he well, was a guitar player. You, whatever mood you're in. Dumas, Dumas. I can't. I think he pronounced it Dumas. Um, <laughs> but he was a Berkeley grad, so you can what kind of guitar player he was. I mean, we're talking Dream Theater, right? And right. Yeah, and so that's like that's like uh, my singer. He's also a guitar player, but he also plays bass. And he's he's his favorite band is Dream Theater. So he plays guitar like a maniac. He's my brother too. He's a maniac with that stuff. I can't. I, I, like if you come up with a song, don't even bring it to me because I, I don't know what I'm doing with that. <laughs> I never got. I, I never could get into. Um, there's some some Dream Theater early old older Dream Theater that I like, but I just can't, I can't. It, that's too much. Uh, Prague, I, yeah. I, you know, all the time changes, and I'm just like it, it, it gets fatiguing after a while. Yeah, you get fatigued. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I Dream Theater with Queens Reich at the House of Blues, oh, way, wow. way, way, way. And after uh, Queens Reich, they they were rotating the headlining, you know. And that night, Queens Reich was the headliner. Hmm. So Jackal, the band Jackal, opened the whole thing they, they were okay I, mean, I remember jackal the chainsaw then, guy right huh the chainsaw guy right yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they, they did about six songs and that was it so that was cool then dream theater got up and after about four songs in i'm just like going oh <laughs> god you know are they almost done you know i right. can't i can't handle much more of this i want queens right now yeah so uh, it seemed like an eternity, but they finally got done. Of course, and Queens Right came up there. That was still when they had Jeff Tate, mm. and uh, you know, just like I had seen, I had seen Queens Right on the Operation Minecraft tour, and wow. so I knew they were, you know, they're just incredible. But so at any rate, uh, Ed became my partner on the project, so he did all the guitar work. Um, I wrote the songs, and I played a little guitar, but I'm. I'm, I was gonna say, how come you didn't do the guitars? You played the guitar. <laughs> I'm a, that uh, good. I'm okay. Okay, all right. You know, hold, I can hold my own. I play guitar, you know, um, on some songs in concert and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm not a, an educated, um, you know, phenomenal guitar player. Um, but Ed, you know, he is, and so um, I wrote the songs. I, I, you know, the idea of what the rhythms and things and stuff and the breaks, all that kind of stuff, gave it to him. And then he did all, you know, he did the guitar, uh, final guitar work and all the solos and everything. Um, so we put out the, the album and got started getting, you know, really good reviews, um, kind of like you guys, um, uh, getting really <laughs> good, good reviews. And so that kind of made us feel like, 
you know, it's like, Dad, what? Let's try to find some players. Let's maybe we can do this live. I don't know. We're going to have to do stems, um, things like that, because of the it being a concept album, or we just do the the actual songs um, without all the other stuff. But let's put together a band, and so we um, started our search, and and we we got the players and um, really good musicians that we, we tried to find the, the best around in florida at the time mm. and uh started you know, rehearsing and started going out and, and uh gigging and um just like with term pie just like with malachi we started building up a big audience we were packing out the it um at one point we were packing out like, like the mid-sized clubs um and stuff like that and people were really liking you know because you kind of traditional heavy metal and it's got a good metal scene too yeah a decent one yeah yeah exactly and uh well florida unfortunately uh florida is predominantly uh black death doom right viking yes. remote yeah. metal yeah <laughs> that, that's what florida is known for a lot of their bands the big thrash bands or uh, metal uh, you know uh, black metal stuff bands that are big now came out of Florida. Right. Uh, so we were just kind of different. And, and a lot of times we would get pigeonholed. We get stuck on a stage, you know, four band night, five band night. And either, you know, we might be the third band in, or sometimes we'd be the, the closing band and all the bands are, except for us are this, you know, screaming stuff. So they're getting, they're <laughs> doing all their stuff. And then we get up there, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. What's that? You know, like I said, cross between Queens Wright and Judas Priest and Little Scorpion. So you know, uh, but traditional metal. He gave them a break. Uh, well, that it actually ended up working more than not, yeah. and it it worked well for us because people were like, "Wow, this is really cool. You guys are really good." Yeah, you know, yeah. you just been listening to screaming stuff, and then I get up there and it's like, you know, la, ah, you know, this opera. <laughs> Yeah. going on and um so but it did it did really well and um we i had started work on the second album which took 13 years to finally put out um i had um i told you 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 said about talking yeah you, if you, let you talk, got five minutes <laughs> I, Hurry up. I, i'll talk two stinking hours bro Right. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Well, no, don't go too long. Again. But, but I'm know, I, the other guy. I got a lot of years to put in here. <laughs> you you do. No, I, I shouldn't have started at the beginning. <laughs> it it should have went. My right fault. I was going to, and then the, the thing with the the wig, I just I wanted to know. <laughs> yeah. So this is your fault. It is my um, fault. So to the audience, this is Wayne's fault that I'm rambling. That's all right. But, That's okay. I'll do my other show at eight twenty. That's all right. <laughs> we'll go over time. <laughs> yeah. I um I uh see okay absolutely so again we're gonna do the second album. Um Absalon again was we, we were signed to an indie label in Germany and um my my wife, you know my now wife, she is a Japanese uh composer, she, uh, composes music for TV and films and then does other kinds of music too on her own but she was in japan um living in japan so she was on the label too and the owner of the label suggested that i should get hold of her and maybe because of the kind of music i did and that she is a composer we could collaborate you know so i i wrote her one thing led to another we fell in love and and i flew to japan and we got married in tokyo oh wow cool yeah um and uh at some point one night um while we were going through the immigration process which took a year she was still in japan i was here in the states and we we would skype every every day twice a day and um and one night we were just kind of joking about music and said you know we ought to do our we ought to do something and well, yeah we can and we it was just a joke mm. and we'll call the fire sphere <laughs> and we'll and we'll have characters we'll be characters and 
we won't go by our real names. And I said, I, and I'll be, I'll be priest and I'll dress like a priest and she's going to be, um, um, yeah. Uh, Rosemary, uh, butterfly. Oh, okay. And, and we, we, we created this whole backstory for this, this project. I mean, a whole backstory and it, it started as a joke and then we wrote a song together and it was really cool yeah. and uh mm -hmm. very very different it was it was i can't even explain what fire sphere is it's it's kind of heavy metal it's got metal but then it's got a lot of orchestrated orchestra stuff and it it's just different and cool mm. so we ended up you know making fire sphere a thing we we wrote songs we and we put out an album um called requiem and i'll be damned if it didn't do well mm. so we put together a band ed he he stuck with us and he played guitar and the we had two guitarists in absalon and so, so both ed and the other guitarist tyler came into fire sphere so I put Absalon on the bad burner right. and we started striking out with fire sphere. And just like with all the other ones, we started the following. We were playing all the clubs in Florida <laughs> and we had a huge show. Uh, we had, we had stems and stuff. So everything was, you know, programmed and organized right. and huge screen behind us. And my wife also makes videos The I, I, if you've watched the videos, the new videos for Absalon. She did those. Oh wow! Cool. Uh, I, yeah, I was so watching one of her videos. videos. Really huh? I said I watched one of her videos. Did she do her own video too, or does somebody else do hers? She does all. Yeah, all of them. Wow. All, oh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, she does them and edits and everything. Wow! So she did all the videos. Every song had a video, and we then we had it in between short videos to kind of segue into the next song. It was a it was a show. It was a production hmm. um, that was really difficult to put on. So we didn't. We weren't. We weren't playing like every week or every weekend. We we had to plan our shows, and then we had to be in a place that was big enough to we could put everything. Mm -hmm. And we wore co serious costumes and all that kind of stuff. And so that was we really starting to do really well. And uh, we were really building up a good audience, and then the pandemic hit, mm. and that was the end. Killed it. Really? It didn't con oh. Yeah. That sucks. Well, yeah, you know, the pandemic went on. I mean, technically for over two years, where it was really bad. Yeah. And so you know, we we just decided that you know, uh, the guitar, one of the guitar players, he he really wasn't into wanting to go and you know to a club you mm. know and be with all kinds of people and all that stuff and run a risk of getting getting covid and, and I, we we totally understood that you know right. I mean, we didn't um so that was kind of the was the end uh of fire sphere and then uh my my wife came to the states in 2015 we've got through immigration process and, and so she came to the States there in Florida um, in 2015. So then we moved here to Illinois. See, I'm getting to the end of the story. Thank God. It's so long. <laughs> Forget about it. Hey, you, know, you ask me the questions, and I mean, I'm just answering. I haven't, answered, I haven't said a word. <laughs> Did I even introduce the show? Bit of being good food. Hey. Um, I'm not Italian. I'm just from New York. Yeah, you're from New York. <laughs> That's it. Oh, so, you know, Italian. I don't even know well, what I am. I'm yeah, a mutt. But it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we moved here, <laughs> Illinois. Uh, we moved into a 103 year old haunted house, and um, and, and I won't even start getting that. That's for a whole nother. That, show. We'll do a whole nother show on that one. Yeah, You'll definitely we, come we, back on. I'll have you back on. We, we do paranormal, and we're uh, we have a paranormal investigations business. Oh, so do we you? Go, I yes. actually, um, I was uh, this. I was. I had a network at one point. It was Pot, uh, Rap Sad Review Network, and I was just going to put a uh, a paranormal show on our network. 
actually the one of the girls that does the show i i know her. she's a friend she's one of my uh cousin's ex-girlfriends or whatever but uh she i should i'll i'll, I'll share the show with you because she she is a paranormal investigator as well awesome yeah it, well it's a blast but like i said i, I love watching that stuff. i i i and i know a lot of people hate it but i love ghost adventures <laughs> so I'm a ghost I'll, adventures fan <laughs> i'm gonna stay on course here right, uh right. Yeah, because you get me off course. Too. Listening, we're probably at this point going, "Oh my God, does he ever shut up?" Um, <laughs> so we, yeah, so we moved here to the haunted house, and um, we're friends. We have friend a lot of musician friends in Germany, and um, I have a, a very good friend. Uh, his name's Mark Vandenberg or Van Derberg in Germany, and Thorsten Elighausen. And who's also in Germany? He he has his own little indie label in Germany, but um, he he does mixing and mastering and stuff as well. So I just decided, you know what? I want I want to do Absalon again. I want to at least you know we're not going to go out and do concerts, but I want to put out some more Absalon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got hold of Mark and said, dude. Um, would you be interested in doing the guitar work? Cause I want this to have a European sound uh, to it. Guitar wise, not an American sound like Ed had, you know, that Berkeley grad Ed American sound. Yeah. I wanted a European sound. And uh, so he did all uh, again, I wrote all the songs and um, sent them to him. And then he did all the guitar work and it uh, definitely it's, you know, that European and Bay Europe, Mm. sounding stuff um the guy's he's he's a phenomenal guitar player um just he blows my mind and uh so he did the guitar work my wife did all the orchestration orchestration on all the songs um and now this is for the album uh, portraits of madness right yeah okay. yeah the newest one. and she did there there's all the all the little in between mm. orchestrated that she wrote all those and um it's again I, I don't what i don't know what possessed me to do another stupid concept album i i i, I look back now and i wish i had just done a, a regular just songs and not done but i did another concept I know, it's I'm, cool I'm, you know it's uh, i like concept albums sometimes they work sometimes they don't but your your two albums do definitely work they're good i like them um, and there, I see where you were going because you know you're a fan of the the Operation Mindcrime stuff, and I love that album. That, that that's you know a huge favorite of mine. And you know you do get pretty close to that. You know as soon as that, when I heard the first album, I, I instantly thought of Operation Mindcrime. Just even your voice, you know your vocals are, you know your Jeff Tate's clone. Are, are you a fan of, of Todd Latore's Queen Drink? I think uh, I I think he's a, a an extremely good singer. I like him. Uh, better in um, uh, what? What's his it? Uh, King Crimson or uh, uh, Crimson Glory? He was in Crimson, Crimson Glory for like Glory. one minute. Yeah. yeah, I I like him better. I I think I'm probably just jaded because to me Queen's right is Queen's right is Jeff Tate. Is Jeff Tate? Yeah. Uh, I mean, nobody. Uh, Jay, he a very unique voice. Nobody sounds. Uh, there's people that come close. I kind of sound like him. Yeah. yeah, you definitely have his new uh, some of his nuances and stuff that he does. That's which, you know, yeah. Mm. Well, and I always have all the way back to Malachi. Uh, yeah. People, but dude, you sound like Queens Wright, man. You sound like Jeff Tate. And I sang a lot higher, of course, in the 80s. Yeah. Um, a lot. I had like a four and a half octave range. I sang, oh, wow. I could totally sing Queens Wright at, at that time, I, all the songs, but um, not now, but uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm really too much into queens the the toddlatory queens i think they got some good stuff uh, i think their their newest album um there's stuff on there that i think i like probably better than the other stuff that they've yeah. done with him yeah, i think it's the best one so far that they've done yeah. yeah but he's singing i think he's he's finally after over 10 years now he's he's singing he's more himself exactly yeah yeah Instead of trying to sound just like, you know, so much like Jeff Tate. I mean, yeah. it's still there that, because that's his voice. Yeah. But and um, it's like, yeah, you, you, you know, this is you. Mind. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. But I'm still, yeah, I'm still not telling you. It's, 
it's just not Queen's right to me without Jeff Tate. But yeah. what do you uh, think of the uh, when they started doing like all this cabaret crap? Were you into that? Uh, actually, Queen's Reich, they kind of lost me after. I mean, the the original Queen's Reich after Promised Land. Okay, yeah, that's when everybody I think fell off too. Yeah. Yeah, after that, it started getting into some really, and that and that was Jeff Tate's fault, but it mm. really started to some like weird, like I, I I can't get into the group. So there, there was some good, still some good songs mm. that came after period, but um, you know, it's just it's like Jeff Tate, and I I guess from what I've read, he, he did it purposely. Um, he he just didn't want to do that metal metal stuff anymore yeah. and so yeah. started going off into this other stuff it's also but probably weird. hard on his vocals too because you know he's saying a lot of really high stuff you know like you did when you were younger and once you get older you know that you can't keep that and a lot of that earlier stuff it's very hard to sing no he can't he he doesn't i, I i'm sure that uh you know they tune down now yeah, yeah. um you know so he can at least he he can't sing like that anymore you yeah. know but he yeah. When you get older, your, your voice changes everything. Yeah, it changes. He, as great as Dio was, um, of course, he was sick. But, um, you know, even as Dio got older, he he wasn't, you know, Rob Halford no. totally. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I still, you know, Judas Priest fan. And I think he's one of the greatest metal singers ever uh, up in that top five. But he, he can't sing either anymore. Yeah. Um, you can hear him struggling. You know, uh, yeah it's 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 really difficult so but um yeah so the yeah i the queen's right especially the first um of course the their original ep that got me into them but then rage for order operation mind crime and empire um and i think promised land was after that it, um but mm -hmm. those first you know three four uh albums i think they were you know, at their their peak, their height of uh, just writing incredibly good songs, and yeah, yeah. the shows are incredible. And, and of course, Jeff Tate's voice was off the charts. And um, so, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm still, of course, a major. You know, I'm a Queens Right, the old Queens Right fan, <laughs> and and I I've, I've always been compared vocally compared to him. And actually, it used to be cool. Mm -hmm. Um, but honestly, sometimes I really, <clears throat> I, I get tired of it. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. 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 You know, it's like, okay. Yeah. I know. It's just the way I sing, but you know, I'm not Jeff Tate and I'm not, I'm not trying to purposely sing like that. Yeah. It's just, it's how it comes out. Yeah. That's your you voice. Know? Yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, this newest album, um, that's funny because a, a friend of mine actually he's a big king diamond fan and how his band started out it was a king diamond tribute band and he, oh. he, he called it them so he you know he did all the makeup and stuff like that so now he turned it into a real band called them and he still does the king diamond type stuff but he adds his own vo uh, vocals in there as well but yeah he still gets constantly you know you you know you compare to a uh, king diamond all the time and even i say to him too but you know he loves king diamond so he doesn't really care but he's getting kind of sick of it too well, you you know you get after a while. I mean, like I said, it's it's especially back in the Malachi days. You know, I, I thought I I really thought it was cool because oh, you're comparing me to Jeff Tate. Yeah. Okay, you know. But as years go on, and it's like uh, you know, yeah, twenty twenty thirty years later, it's like all right. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I I I, I like that. Just someone go, hey, you know, you got a good voice. Yeah. Thank you. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know I. I, I like the new album, um, but I'm gonna, you know, to be honest with you, and I, I think actually I, we we might have my messaging uh, mm -hmm. talked a little bit about it, but um, I feel like it, it, it we we kind of rushed it, um, and just to get, because I it, it's my fault, I, it's my bad, because uh, I wanted to get something out. I All was right. just like excited because these songs are coming out and i'm excited and I'm, I'm working with mark and i really want to get this out so i i think i rushed it a little too much as opposed to taking a little more time letting mark really uh because mark's a great arranger mm -hmm. and 
I didn't really give him a lot of time to to work with the songs and to make them better. And I know he could have made them better. I think I feel like I sang, and I don't know why, but it seems I listen back to it now and I feel like I sang too low. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of the songs, almost all the songs, you know, I kind of go up to a mid range. And the thing is, I can sing a lot higher. Right. <clears throat> so it, there, there's a couple of instances on it where, you know, I'll go, ah, you know, I do a, but so there, there's some things that, um, I, I I think, you know, it's water under the bridge now, but if I could go back, I think I, 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 knowing now what I uh, know, I, I would have maybe taken a little more time. So, of course, I'm, uh, as you know, um, I'm, I'm already got five songs written for the next. Right. Um, um, we're in, I think we're going to do like eight, eight songs. No concepts, going to be straight, straight songs, cool. heavy metal. Not going to have a bunch of orchestra and prog stuff. It's just going to be, it's going to be kind of like Queens Wright really meets Judas Priest. It's going to be a wall of guitars, um, double, so, you know, solos and traditional, you know, new wave of British heavy metal type. Um, well, but with the European flair to it. And yeah. I'm, uh, Mark, we're going to take our time, let Mark, you know, really have time with each song to work out arrangements and make the song better, you know, and all that. And I'm going to be singing um, quite a bit higher on these songs. <laughs> um, it's, it, it's funny cause I'm doing, uh, you know, rough track or scratch tracks of the guitar and my voice to send right. Mark. So do his thing. <clears throat> and the first two songs, you know, I went to record the vocals and I'm like, you know, I, I got it in my head and I start singing and I'm like, oh, oh, oh wow. I haven't done this <laughs> in a while, you know, but now it's starting to, you know, I'm, I'm singing. I'm, I'm every day. I'm coming in here and I'm playing the songs and I'm singing and uh, getting, working up the muscles again to start hitting those, those notes again. Yeah. Still never going to be high. Right. In the, um, yeah, like, yeah, don't, don't, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> but, it will not be, yeah, the, the next one I'm excited about. It's going to be, a, I think, just a straight on heavy metal, traditional metal, a la Judas Priest firepower or something, you know. Um, and, yeah. So, so you, the band is growing. Like, this is the third album. So now, you, you, you know, the band has grown a lot since the, even since the last one, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think um, it definitely... I, I think the next album will have a little bit more, will be a little bit more in touch with our debut. Okay. The debut album, um, even though there was a still, you know, a bit of orchestration and stuff on it, it was a little bit more metal mm -hmm. compared to this, the second one, which is, I think maybe a little bit more orchestrated prog um, you know, type of a thing. So it'll be a little bit more in touch, I think, with my original roots, but it's going to be leaning more towards, uh, even more towards having, like say, that traditional Judas Priest type, you know, wall of guitars that, you know, double guitar attack and all that kind of stuff that wasn't on this last last one. Yeah. You know, cool. um, so so that's uh, yeah. So, you know, we started back in the early 80s and we've now progressed up to 2023 yeah when do you think you're going to get that new album out probably next year i, guess. I, I wanted i would like to release it by the end of the year oh, the end, oh okay what? yeah i mean we still got we have you know lost it lost don't rush time. it don't rush no there's no it, rush well it okay let me re, let me restate that uh <laughs> I would like to have it out by the end of the year, but if it's not ready, then early next year. All right, I like that answer better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's really going to be up to Mark. I'm not going to I'm not going to rush him. I'm not going to push him. So it, it just depends on how fast you know he works on things. I, I got to write three more songs anyway. So we, mm -hmm. we, it, what's we, the, we got what's it. some themes of some of the songs you got going? Um. 
This one is kind of eclectic. The, the, the title of the album is The Blood Seed. Okay. And at first I was I was going to do it in German, the title uh, in German, but because uh, it's really cool. <laughs> but um, then I, the more I thought about it, I thought people might be like, you know, is it, what is this? Is this like, is this Ramstein? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so uh, I decided just English, the blood sea. But I mean, there's, there's a song about um, the angels, uh, 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 the angels fighting a war with angels and they're killing each other and all, right. uh, all that kind of stuff. Then there's one um, kind of like a, I, I think it could be interpreted as like a vampire type of a thing. Um, one about hell, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. monsters. It's it's so kind it's very of, uh, very eclectic. Yeah, it's just yeah, whatever okay. lyric wise pops into my head when I'm writing and the mood of the song and what I think. It, well, this sounds cool. Yeah, you know. Uh, so there's no thing. There's not, like I said, no concept. There's no run. There's not going to be some running theme through all the songs. You, you can say, oh, he must be, he's always oh, talking about AI, you know, <laughs> he's talking about, uh, politics or the end of the world. Or it's, it's just going to be like, okay, what is this one about? You know, yeah. what so, do you think about all this AI crap going on? It's getting insane. You know, it, I mean, it's, it shouldn't be surprising to anyone that we're evolving into where AI is, but um, it's kind of, kind of scary. I mean, you know, I, I look at it from a music industry standpoint, and I think, you know, they've already um, put, been, have put out a so- couple of songs so that people thought were from a famous artist. I think it's in rapping, rappers, though. Um that was written by AI. Really? Wow. And, and the song is really popular, but it wasn't written by the artist. It was written by AI. And it's like, wow. is that going to be some weird thing in the future where we're going to, uh, the industry is going to go, Hey, we just have AI write songs and we don't got to pay an artist, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, you, you got to kind of, and then I, you know, um, I, I, I rarely, uh, rarely talk uh politics any anymore at all but no, that's um, not true i see your you, facebook <laughs> well <laughs> once in a while oh no are uh, you looking at my old facebook page? no a recent one <laughs> okay recent yeah. stuff i yeah. see i see you on there <laughs> yeah i i i do too okay. i can't help it you know but uh, we're we're actually we're on a different side I'm, I'm i'm on no side but I see the things that you write and, you know, we're, we, we're a little different, but it's okay. I like you. So it's, it's all right. Well, and, and that's fine. But I, you know, I worry about, I think about the use of AI to spread disinformation, right? You yes. know, whatever side, that's you the know, scary thing. Yep. you know, and you got to wonder, you know, when, cause there was actually a video not too long ago. I think it was actually Biden. They had a video of Biden, his, his face and everything, but they changed like the words that he was saying and stuff like that. I'm like, uh-huh. it's, it's, it's insane. Well, yeah. Oh, they, they, they put out, um, a, uh, an attack ad that the entire, it is an attack ad on Biden, but yeah. the entire ad was created by AI. Wow. And so scenes that you see in the ad aren't real. Hmm. They're, they're all created by AI. And that's the kind of stuff, you know, especially when you start seeing that kind of stuff pop up on social media yeah. and people, you know, that, that can't think for themselves or can't look at something and, you know, rationally look at something and go, you know, I don't know, mm. you know, it, then they're going to be bamboozled. And I, and again, I, I, I can say both, both sides can do this. Yeah. And, yeah. So you start wondering, okay, well, what's real and what isn't real? There's enough unreal garbage on social media as it is that you can't, you got to try to decipher. Right. Um, but now you have AI creating stuff and it looks yeah, it's, real. It's you know, there's some guy making um, videos now, uh, the deep fake videos, and they put Arnold Schwarzenegger in all these. <laughs> it's, it's it's hilarious, but God. <laughs> uh, I posted a couple of those. Yeah. 
the Hound of Music. Yes, oh, that one was hilarious. And he keeps saying, and he always puts boobies. And the yeah. mouthful just like, yeah. But uh, <laughs> it, it, it's uh, Walter's well, one with Tom Cruise, right? Where it, I mean, it looks just, it looks like Tom Cruise, but it's not. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, um, I think it, it it's scary, but then on the other hand, what are you going to do? It it can't be stopped. Yeah. And how do you even regulate, you know, the, the government, you know, they're going to try to regulate it. I mean, how are you going to regulate? You can't think, even think, regulate social stinking media. Yeah, I was going to say that. Right? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, the AI thing is, is um, it's a little scary, you know, how far are we away from, you know, terminator <laughs> i might be there pretty soon <laughs> uh, so but before we get there please go uh, check out absalon's music uh darkness rising and also a portrait of madness uh, both uh, really great albums and uh so yeah they're, they're good albums <laughs> i listen to them both I, I do enjoy them a lot <laughs> i didn't know what else to say <laughs> well you know i think um the of course, the listeners need probably should know that we're kind of a uh, what is it a mutual admiration society. So, mm. um, you know, I like I like Severed Angel too. So, I mean, I like I your guys. So. Good. So, yeah. Fine. No, I, I'm dead serious. It's all right. Uh, I believe you. You. Guys, I'm not lying to you either. I like your stuff. I well, you, you guys, wouldn't be on the show if I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good note. Yeah. Um, <laughs> If you you guys um now i'm plugging I'm, you know on your please, show I'm gonna plug please do uh, severedangel.bandcamp.com go ahead it <laughs> i and you should um you guys um really do sim european symphonic metal really well yeah i mean american symphonic metal you know um it wasn't intentional it just happened and it yeah came, it came out i'm not one to toot my own horn but yeah it came out better than what i, I even imagined it did so it's cool. it it's really it is it's really good i i i love um i love symphonic uh metal and of course most of the symphonic metal i listen to is you know european yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. well from. you can't find that stuff here really so no it's it's rare there's there's not a lot of symphonic uh there's i think there's there's a probably should i maybe call them wannabe or trying to sound like some symph uh, european symphonic metal here in america but um uh, you guys you know and like i said i listen to a lot of that kind of music and um uh, the, and when i first listened to um I, I I first listened to the I watched the video. Um, help me out here. My video. Uh, yeah. Oh, in the red. The other one. Uh, attachment unavailable. Yes. Okay. And and I was like, wow, this is really good. And and I went and played it for my wife and said, man, and and that's when I I told her about you and and then we in uh about the other issues that we were discussing yeah, yeah, yeah. about it a, a certain that'll label. be another show too <laughs> okay. yeah we'll have some stuff to share then we'll, yeah. yeah that's kind of <laughs> so <laughs> but yeah anyway so that's uh that's my uh natural plug for you Thank um you. appreciate that your audience really really needs to check out your they do. Your bands. And where's stuff. my CD? Oh, here. It is. You can also buy a CD. Severedangel.bandcamp.com. Yes. And where can people go to buy your stuff, Absalon, or anything? Oh. Uh, well, we we uh, we have uh, this. The album is on all digital platforms, whatever that means. <laughs> um, so I guess wherever you, you can go digitally and get it, and then. Um, we have physical co CDs um, through Rocks, Rocks, that's two X's, R O X X. Rocks Records, um, their, their subsidiary under them, uh, No Life Till Metal right. Records. Yeah. Um, so you could go to No Life Till Metal Records.com 
and order um, the CD. And the uh, the guy that uh, uh, that did uh, the layout, and he also owns No Life Till Metal Records, um, and you, you know of him, uh, Scott Waters. <laughs> He did uh, the. Uh, my wife did all the graphics uh, hmm. for it, and then he did the layout. And he did a, a fantastic job, twelve-page booklet and all that kind of stuff. Did a really good job on the layout. Um, so we're real thankful to him and um, uh, Bill from Rocks Records for doing the CD. Hmm. And uh, luckily, I've known Bill for a lot, a lot of years, so it kind of helped that we already we had a long relationship, but I was really surprised that he agreed to, to, you know, press the CD. I'd originally contact him to say, Hey, you know, who do you use to press your CDs and stuff? And, and you know, how much around does it cost and that? Cause I was just going to do it myself. Right. And uh, then he, he's like, Oh, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it through rocks records. No life. Told me we'll do it. Wow. You know, cause he's a big Malachi fan and, um, he liked Absalon. And it's like, wow, that that really worked out well. Yeah, can't go bad. At least one thing worked yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're me and Bill are in talks about yeah. some other. Stuff. So right. very cool, very cool. All right, well, I'm getting running late for my other show, so get out of here. Well, I, I, I warned you right from the beginning. You know, you, unless you want to join me for the other show, do you listen to the new Metallica album? Don't tell me the answer. It'll be another hour. Listen to some of it. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 okay. It's kind of like old Metallica, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. It's got some cool stuff in there, I think. Yeah, so. but I'll shut up now. I think I've talked way you more. You have. You've you talked more than in your next show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Ken, get we will. I, I will definitely have you on again. Yeah, Ken, thank fun. you very much for coming on the show. I had a lot of fun. Well, I appreciate you having me, my friend. All right. No problem, my friend. All right, <laughs> All right everybody. RatsOutReview.com. Hit subscribe on YouTube, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.